What you guys got another video on how to take back your Windows 11 privacy. Now we are using a Windows 11 Pro Edition here, which means we're going to be using the group policy editor for the majority of it to remove all of the bloat and all of the telemetry and data collecting that you have in Windows 11. Inside the group policy editor, we are going to be turning off all of this settings here. And we don't need all of this stuff like diagnostic and feedback and all the other stuff that is bundled in Windows. You can use Group Policy Editor to turn all of this stuff off. And I'm going to go through this step by step. And it will take about an hour to do all of this. But once you've done all this, you can save your settings and you will be able to instantly put this back on a fresh install of Windows very quickly. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you the version of Windows we're using here. Again, we are using a Pro Edition, which means this gives you access to the Group Policy Editor. If you don't have a Pro Edition, you will have to do all of this via the registry. Now, again, this is not the only way of doing this. There is ways of doing this via batch files, also uh, PowerShell scripts, and there's also applications as well, which you can use to debloat Windows and turn off telemetry. This is not about which is the best way of doing it. This is just a way of doing it via the group policy editor. So I hope you understand that. So let's go ahead and type GPO in the search or GP edit, and this will open up the group policy editor here. We're going to go through, you can see it's into two categories here, compute configuration and user configuration. We're going to be uh, concentrating a lot on the computer configuration here. Now, there's loads of things in here which I'm not going to mess with. I'm just talking about some of the stuff that you are concerned about. So let's go ahead and start off with administrative templates and then Windows components. We're going to come down here and look at speech. Uh, inside here, allow automatically update of speech data. Again, this is all to do with telemetry. And you can come in here. It's important that you read the information on the panel here because sometimes it can be tricky. Enabling stuff will disable it and disabling it will disable it. So it's a little bit confusing sometimes. So you have to make sure you read all of this stuff. Any of this stuff you need, you can reverse. This is not a destructive way of doing things like scripts and things like that that actually remove and delete stuff sometimes. We are just turning features off here. So let's go ahead and go to the next location. I'm going to go back all the time like this so you don't get confused. So we're going to go back to right here. Open up administrative templates under the computer configuration panel. Go to system here and open this up. And we're going to come down here. And there's quite a few areas in here that we can mess around with. So let's just find one here like OS policies. Inside here, we've got a bunch of policies that we can change. The first one we're going to look at is allow clipboard history. Now, some people like this feature. They love the way they can go back and see all of their clipboard history. Some people have more of a privacy concern with this sort of stuff. So some people prefer to disable it. So read the information. If you want to have this enabled, then leave this alone. If you don't, you can turn it off. This also applies to a lot of other features inside here, which are to do with the clipboard uh, history. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and toggle these off as well. And you can see there's a few other things in here which you can have a look at. So you've got enables activity feed and also allows publishing of users activities. Again, it's self-explanatory, really. We're going to go ahead and we're going to disable a lot of this stuff. So let's go in here and you can see if you enable this policy, settings of activity types as uh, applicable are allowed to be published. So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to disable that. It's that simple. And again, the good way of uh, group policy, it means that you're not being destructive with the operating system. If you need to reverse something, you just go into the group policy editor and you can just reverse it. It's that simple. And that is why group policy editor is so powerful and useful to a lot of users. So we're going to go ahead and disable this one and all, which is allow upload of users activities. And we're going to disable that. So they're all disabled. So let's go ahead and go back here. And we're going to go back to this area here under the compute configuration. And what we're going to do is go to the next location. So let's open up administrative templates, go to Windows components, and then we can go back in here. Now, there is quite a few things in here we need to look at. I'm going to keep going back so it doesn't confuse you. So we're going to go into search here. Now, there is quite a lot of search stuff inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and it's pretty much uh, allow cloud search. 
and allow Cortana and things like that. So obviously we want to disable a lot of this stuff because we don't want this running on the system if you're one of these people that are paranoid about stuff being sent back, okay, uh, to Microsoft. So we can enable this and you can see in here, you can disable cloud search right here like this. And you can enable this feature and apply an OK, or you can just outright disable it. It's entirely up to you how you go about doing it. But that's the way I like doing it. Inside Allow Cortana here, again, we can remove Cortana as well after we've made these settings. So that's what I will be doing. But I'm just going to disable this first and make sure Cortana's disabled so she's not running and collecting data and harvesting data that I've got and sending it back to Microsoft. So let's go ahead and just turn that feature off here. Goes without saying, there's a bunch of other stuff in here that is related to Cortana as well. And again, Cortana is being phased out. And a lot of this stuff is going to be replaced in the future with their new um, AI called Copilot. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to disable all this stuff here as well. Now, like I said, if you look inside here, this is quite a boring, laborious task to go through and do all this. And this is what you have to do to get all of it set the way you like. Once you've done that, you can even clone this image or you can save all of your group policy settings and then just import them onto your new fresh install Windows system and it will make these settings very quickly like that. You won't have to go through this. So you're going to have to go through it just once. So I'm going to be talking here about some of these settings here. So these are all still with Cortana. And again, if you look inside this list here, there's a few other things that we can disable. Allow indexing of encrypted uh, files. So here is another one here. And it also gives you a little uh, readout here so you can read what this is actually doing. So you can go through this. I'm not going to go through this in all great detail here and uh, explain it because it, I will be here for three, four hours. So let's go ahead and we're going to go into here and uh, we're going to disable i say disable but i mean disable and enable because obviously sometimes you're enabling to disable as i've mentioned so let's go ahead and deal with some of these other ones so are these settings going to break your pc that's another thing that a lot of people worry about whether this is going to break their pc none of these in here are going to break your computer unlike a lot of the scripts that are removing key components they will break your system this is not going to break your pc so we're disabling here indexer uh, data location. We're disabling that uh, option right there. And we're going to go through here. Don't allow locations of on removable drives uh, to be added to the libraries. We can disable this feature here. If you go through here, it will tell you what this policy does. And this policy setting configures whether or not locations on your removable drives can be added to the libraries. And you can see there, if enabled, removable drives cannot be added to the libraries. So that's why we're enabling that feature so it can't be added. Next is this one here. Don't search the web or display web results in search. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to deal with this one here. So you can see here on the right hand pane, it says if you disable this policy, queries will be performed on the web search and results will be displayed. If we enable this feature, it won't be. So we're going to enable that feature. So this is where you have to be careful with disable and enable. OK, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through and enable this feature as well for this one. And uh, we're going to apply this and OK. OK, so let's do this one here. Enable indexing of online delegate mailboxes. So we can do this one here. So again, read through the actual information here. Now, for Linux users that say you don't have any control over Windows, it's completely false because uh, you do have a lot of control over Windows. You just have to know how to do it and where to do it. So Group Policy Editor does give you quite a lot of control of the operating system. And there's also registry edits that you can add in as well. And there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do to take back full control of the operating system. Will it ever be uh, telemetry free? Probably not because it's probably embedded deep into the operating system. And that is something that you won't be able to stop. But you can do uh, your best to reduce a lot of it. So we're going to prevent indexing email attachments as well. We're going to definitely do that as a privacy concern there. So we're going to enable that feature. And again, you can prevent indexing files in online files cache. And there's another one here, which is to do with prevent indexing Microsoft uh, Office Outlook. 
we'll definitely do that one as well. OK, so let's have a look down this list here. We'll take a bit of time, as I've said, because obviously there's quite a few policies that you can check and uh, I'm going to be doing some of these. So let's have a look at this one here. Prevent clients from uh, querying the index remotely. So we definitely want to uh, do something here. So I'm going to enable that feature there and that should uh, sort that out. So let's go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and look a bit further down. And I can already see here, there is some here. See what information is shared in search. So we can take a look at this one here. And inside here, we want to enable this feature uh, because we can change the type of information uh, that is set to what information is shared in search. And I'm going to put this to anonymous information. And there we go. And that means it's not going to be shared. And there might be a few more in here that you might want to uh, configure because there's quite a few not configured here. But we're going to leave that as is right there for the search part. And we'll move on to another location. But by all means, take a bit more time and go through. But I think they're the main culprits right there. OK, so let's go back right here and start again. So what we're going to do is start under computer configuration. I'm going to go to administrative templates here. And we're going to go into system. Now, there's a few places in here that we can uh, change and we can do this either now or later on. But what we need to do is system restore, storage sense and remote assistance. So let's take a look inside here. So inside remote assistance, we have got allow only Windows Vista or later connections. And we also have some other ones here. The ones we're looking at is the configure offer remote assistance. That's what we want here. So inside here, we've got disable and you've got enable. If we enable it, you can see allow. We don't allow this. We want to disable it. So let's disable that feature. Now, obviously, if you want to allow remote assistance, then by all, all means do so. But that is a security risk. People get scammed and they will be able to remote into your PC. So we're definitely going to disable a lot of these remote assistance on this system. Now, this refers to Windows Vista or later. And again, this is for connections. Only allow Windows Vista or later connections if you want to allow this. But I'm going to leave this as is. But you can enable, I'm not going to enable this one. I'm going to leave this not configured for now. And uh, we've just done the actual configure offer remote assistance. And also, we're going to go into the next place, go back here, and we'll go into the next location. So let's go to the next location, administrative templates, go back into system here and pull this back down. And I always go back just to show you the path where we're going to next, which is storage sense. So let's go inside here. Now, some people might use storage sense, but other people have paranoia about some of the information that is being harvested before it's deleted, being sent back to Microsoft. Uh, so if you want to disable it, this is where you can disable it. And it will stop storage sense working and working in the background and erasing any temporary files and stuff like that. But if you use this feature, by all means, leave it alone. You don't have to configure it. You just leave it and it will work. And you can go into the actual storage sense panel and configure it there. But I'm going to be disabling it in here because I know a lot of people don't use it. A lot of gamers won't use this, so they want to turn all this stuff off. So what we'll do, make sure you read the information here. And uh, we're going to be putting these to disabled. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll disable these. Now, remember, some of these have cloud ability as well. And that's where the uh, privacy concerns come into play. Here's another one. Configure storage sense uh, downloads cleanup threshold. And again, we just disable this because we're not using storage sense whatsoever. Uh, so just go through here and turn all of this stuff off, basically. And we'll just disable. And there we go. And we've got one more there we need to do. And uh, this is going to configure this one here. So let's go ahead and disable this as well. Apply and OK. That's all done. So storage sense is taken care of. Now, another location there is system restore as well. But we'll start back off here again so you know exactly where we're going. So now we'll go into administrative templates here. And we'll open this up and we'll go into Windows components. Let's have a break from that location and go into another location. So we'll start off here, biometrics. Uh, so look in biometrics. There's one in here that you can deal with. 
and that is allow the use of the biometrics. So you can see here to disable this, you can just disable it. If you disable this policy settings, the Windows biometrics service is unavailable and users cannot use the biometrics feature. So we're going to turn that off and disable that. So they're now turned off. Now, if you're on a domain, there's one there for domain, but we're not on a domain here. So we're going to leave that as is. So that one should be good enough to go. So next up, what we're going to do here is go back. And then we're going to go down into the next section. Now, again, we haven't touched the user configuration. We're just staying in the computer configuration here. So go back into administrative templates. And then we're going to go into Windows components. And then we're going to go into another area here. So let's have a look here for data collection and preview builds. This is another area. And a lot of this stuff needs to be disabled. A lot of this is for the data collection part, which is a big part of the telemetry that people are concerned about. So let's go ahead and turn all of this off. Allow commercial data pipelines. Well, that says it all right there, doesn't it? So read the information there, and uh, you would definitely want to disable uh, this policy. So apply that and OK. And again, I'm not going to read all that. You can read that yourself. I've already read it a long time ago. I'm not reading it again. So click OK here. And again, we can go through here, allow desktop analytics processing. So again, we don't want that working as well. So we can now turn this off by disabling it and applying this and OK. Again, there's some other ones inside here. And you can see allow diagnostic data. We'll get down to that in a sec. So allow device name to be sent in Windows diagnostic data. Turn this off. And this is going to turn all of this information off. If you disable this or do not configure it, this policy setting, then the device name will not be sent to Microsoft. There you go. So let's turn that off and allow diagnostic data. Again, we are going to enable this feature. We're not going to disable it. We want to enable it because we want to change the actual policy here. So enable. And we're going to see here, right here, diagnostic data off, not recommended. Of course, it's recommended because we don't want to send nothing back. So we're going to apply this and OK that. And this will not send any data back to Microsoft. That's exactly what we want. So click OK here and move on to the next one. Again, there's some other stuff in here that we can take care of. Again, there is one here which is allow updates compliance processing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And again, we're going to disable that feature right there. Done. And you just need to work through a lot of this stuff. And uh, like I said, uh, you can do your own research on all of this stuff. You can search online and uh, it will tell you exactly what this is. This is for the commercial ID. Again, if you enable this feature, it'll allow you to put your commercial ID in here and stuff, but we're just going to disable it. And again, configure diagnostic data, opt uh, in change notifications, and you can see another one there, change settings, user interface, and stuff like that. So we're going to definitely uh, disable a lot of this stuff. Let's click on this one here, and we can configure this one. So we're just going to open this up. And again, you can enable this feature. And there is, this is for endpoint here. We don't really need to do that one. So let's go ahead and go into this one, which is a disabled diagnostic data viewer. So we're going to disable this feature by using the enable feature. You can see here, if you enable this policy setting, the diagnostic data viewer will not be enabled in the settings panel. It will prevent the viewer from showing diagnostic data. So we are definitely going to be enabling that one. And again, there's some other ones here. Do not show the feedback notifications. So again, if you want to enable that feature, this policy will no longer uh, see the feedback notifications. So we'll definitely disable that one as well by enabling it. Now this next one is the uh, limit dump collection. This is your dump files. And some people use these for troubleshooting. If you're not interested in any of that stuff, you can disable it if you want to by enabling this feature. Um, but if you, if you want to limit it, you can do. So this will limit the diagnostic log collection that will be probably sent back to Microsoft as well. By enabling this policy settings, diagnostic logs will not be collected. So we're going to leave that enabled because we don't want those being collected. So there's uh, one or two left inside here which we can uh, tweak. 
So let's go ahead and click the next one. Let's have a look here. So we do have this one here, enable one setting auditing. So auditing, obviously, you know what auditing is. So what we can do is disable this feature because we don't want to use the auditing. This is for the event log here. So we're going to disable that. Now, again, you can leave some of these features on if you wish. There's a couple of more here that we can deal with here. So let's go ahead and click on this one. Limit optional diagnostic data for desktop analytics. So we're going to disable the desktop analytics collection. And we've got one more here, which we can take a look at, which is configure uh, connected user experiences and telemetry. So we're going to disable that feature right there. So let's uh, disable that and apply this and OK. And now that's done. So let's take a quick look here to see if we've got these all covered. There's a few not configured here, but they're not all relevant to us. So let's go ahead and look at this one here. You can see configure diagnostic data, opt in settings, user interface. So we can uh, disable uh, this feature here to data opt in settings. So I'm going to apply this and OK. And that's now done. And uh, again, you can go through some of these other ones if you find ones that you want to change for yourself. But we're just going to do this one here. Do not allow sending intranet or internet history. So we're going to do that one there. And let me have a look and see if there's any more there. I think there's another one here we can do. So this is the disable one setting downloads here. If you enable this policy, Windows will not attempt to connect to the one setting service. So we want to disable that by enabling that feature. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, there is a couple of other ones here, which we can do here. So you can see uh, we can do the drop down uh, box here by enabling this, disable authentic proxies usage. And this is for the telemetry uh, service, or you can disable this feature altogether by putting it on disabled. So depending on how you want to set yours up, you can uh, choose one of these options. I think I'll leave it on the enabled and disable for the proxy there. So this one is disable uh, the deleting diagnostic data. So we will probably need to enable this, as you can see here. If you enable this policy setting that the delete diagnostic data button will be disabled. So let's go ahead and do that because we're not using that feature. So we could just turn it all off. We don't need it and we will be uh, removing that. So let's go ahead and do this one here. Disable this toggle users over inside builds, inside the builds. And we can also do these last couple here. So it turns out that you have to, this is for endpoint. I can see endpoint here. We could leave that disabled, I suppose, but it is for endpoint here. So I'm just going to leave that on not configured. And this one here, I'm not sure what this one is. Let's have a look. Configure diagnostic data opt in for, yeah, we, okay, so we can disable this. So we can disable the diagnostic data changes of notification. There we go. So we'll just apply this and a click OK. You could just read that information there to make sure that you're selecting the right option. OK, so that's now done. And there's just one there that we've left, which is for endpoint. OK, if you're still with me, congratulations for hanging around. And uh, we're just going to go back to computer configuration here. And what we're going to do is we're now going to uh, do some other ones here. So go back into administrative templates, Windows components, and we can now take care of some of the stuff inside here. So let's go to Edge UI and again, allow Edge swipe. So we don't want to allow that. If you do, then leave it alone. But I'm disabling this feature here. If you enable or do not configure this policy setting, users will be able to invoke system UI by swiping. So we're going to disable that feature here. And again, and we're going to disable this one as well. Let's take a look here what it says. So if this set it's over yet, we're going to disable this one. So apply that and OK. And that's the disable help tips. We don't need that. And again, we will be going back in there at some point. So let's go ahead and go back in there again. Windows components. And we're going to go into, let's have a look here what else we've got here. So file history is another one you can turn off if you don't use. But we'll leave that in this video because that is a backup feature. 
So turn on or off Find My Device. We're going to disable this feature. And once you've disabled it, you can apply this and OK. I am just quickly reading some of the information there to make sure I am doing the right one for you guys. And again, there is other areas inside there which we can uh, do as well. So let's go back and we'll open it up again. And we're going to go back into Windows Components. And from here, we are going to Messaging and we are going to allow messaging service Cloud Sync. This is obviously going to be connecting to Microsoft. So we want to disable that feature right there. Now, of course, if you do use Cloud Sync, then by all means in the messaging service, by all means leave that enabled, but I don't. So I'm going to turn that off. OK, so let's go to the next location here. Pull this open a bit and we'll go down to where it says Microsoft Defender Antivirus here. That's in the same location. So I'm going to go back in here and then let's go into maps here. Now inside maps, you'll see it right here. And you can see here, join Microsoft maps. So we can double click on this one right here. And if we open this up, you can see it will say enable or disable, and you can read the information right there. And it's basically saying you can choose uh, to send basic or additional information back to Microsoft. So this is more data collecting and more harvesting of your information. So we can enable that feature and disabled just like so, or you can disable it. So make sure you read the message right down here. And you can see here, if you leave it on disabled, if you disable or not configure this setting, you will not join the Microsoft Maps. So we've left that as is. So we can apply this and OK, and we should be good to go there. I'm just reading to make sure that I've got the right set in there. So apply that and OK, and that's that one done. Now you can do a lot more inside Windows Defender. I don't like ripping Windows Defender out. It does break a lot of stuff. There is ways of taking it out of the system altogether. But if you start messing around with stuff like this, it will break your system. I'm not touching smart screen and all that stuff because that is there to protect you. But there is other settings inside the Windows Defender that you can uh, change, but I'm leaving that as is for this video because I don't want to break people's systems uh, by turning off features that will protect them. Now in the same location, we've got the Microsoft User Experience Virtualization. So we can have a mess around inside here. So inside here, we have this one here, Use User Experience Virtualization, UE-V. And you can see this policy setting allows you to enable or disable user experience virtualization. And again, only applies to Windows 10 or earlier. So we're going to disable this feature anyway. And uh, just to make sure, because if it's on Windows 11, it's a bit more concerning. Uh, and I would just rather disable it. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing there. So there's some other areas inside here. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but we'll just leave that as is. So that is that section done. So let's go back and we'll go back here now. So now we're going to go back to the main area, which is computer configuration. And we're going to go back into administrative templates, back into Windows components here. And inside here, there's quite a few areas that we can still mess around with inside here. So one of them is this area right here. So we're going to go into net meeting. And you can see disable remote desktop sharing. So we're going to definitely do that one here by disabling this feature. And again, we're going to turn that off and apply and OK. That's now done. And this policy, once these are set in place, they will not be changed by Microsoft Windows updates. They will be set in stone. So anytime you update, these settings will not revert back. They will stay as is because they are policies that we have set in place. So let's go down. So let's go to uh, text input here and improve inking and typing recognition. So let's do this one right here. And what we want to do is we want to go in here and disable this feature. And this will stop these services running. So we're going to go ahead and disable this. Once you've done that, apply that and OK. And you can see also here, allow uninstallation of languages, features, and stuff like that. You can turn that off if you wish. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to quickly disable this feature. So let's hit disable and apply an OK. And that's now done. So let's go into another area here. So we've got uh, widgets right below it here. 
and we also have Windows Calendar and a bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. I'm just going to disable a lot of the stuff that's doing with privacy and also some other things. So widgets is another area. People use widgets, so but I'm going to disable widgets here. If you use widgets, then don't touch this area here. If you like your widgets app popping up on the side, by all means, leave it alone. I don't like it. I don't use it. And uh, I'm going to disable it. Now, while we're in this location, we're just going to go down a little bit here. Windows Customer Experience Improvement Program. That says it all right there. And again, we can uh, change this setting. Allow corporate redirection of consumer experience improvements. So we're not going to do that at all. And we want to disable this. So you can see here, if you disable this setting, uploads are not redirected to Microsoft Operations Manager servers. So we're going to disable that. There we go. So this one here, let's have a look at this. Open this up. This is to disable. So we're going to disable this feature and apply this and OK. And that one is dealt with. So that's that done. Okay, so we're back to computer configuration administrative templates. Let's go into control panel. And inside control panel, we're looking for personalization. On the right hand pane, you can see there's a bunch of stuff that you can actually change here. So you can force accent colors and start background and things like that. But you can see this one here prevent enabling lock screen camera. Now we've got a couple of choices here enable or disable. And if you read the information here, you will see. If you enable this setting, users will no longer be able to enable or disable the lock screen uh, camera access to your PC uh, PC settings. So what we can do here is we need to enable this feature and click OK. So that's that done. And uh, we can now move on to the next section. There is a few others there, but we'll leave those. Uh, but this is the main uh, one that you need to do here. Other than that, you can uh, you know set your background here menu background and things like that if you want to mess around with these. I don't want to go too much into that side of it because you'll be here all day. But you get a general idea. If you need to change any other ones, they are sort of personal preference. So let's go into the next section here. So we're going to open this up here. So I'm going to open up administrative templates, go into network here. And inside here, we need to go into DNS client. Inside DNS client, you can see we do have some options available inside here. There's a couple of them inside here that you can mess around with but we're going to be looking for this one right here which says turn off smart multi homed named resolutions so that's what we're going to do here and double click on this and the reason why we want to do this enable this is because of the windows uh, leaking of dns so we don't want to do that so we definitely want to make a change here now you can go ahead and read all through this information uh, but basically you can see here the client should be optimized name resolution across networks. The setting improves performance by issuing parallel DNS. And uh, you can enable this feature. It says here, if you enable this policy, the DNS client will not perform any optimizations. This can cause, uh, as I've said, uh, DNS leaks, which you do not want. So we're going to enable that feature. Now, I'm not going to delve too much inside this area here, but there is a couple of other options available in here. And uh, you've got your DNS servers here. Again, you would need to apply this with an IP address and things like that. But I'm not going to go into that in this video. We'll just leave that setting right there. OK, so let's go back now to Compute Configuration and Administrative Templates and then go into Start Menu and Taskbar. Inside here, what we're going to do is select this one right here. This is uh, the Do Not Keep uh, History of Recently Opened Documents. So once this is done, we need to enable this feature and uh, you can read right here. The difference is what it does, but I'm just going to enable this feature right here and we can apply this and OK. Once we've done that, that should be set. Next, we can have a look and see if there's any other changes inside here that need to be changed. Now, you might want to enable and disable some of these features inside here. But I'm going to leave that as is. So next up, we're going to go back. And we're going to go back into administrative templates here and we're going to go into system, open up system here. And what we need to do is drill down until you see Internet communication and management here inside here. Click on the Internet communication settings 
And this will take us over to the right hand pane. On the right hand pane here, there is one setting in here we want to turn off. And it's this one here, which is turn off Windows customer experience improvement program. And if you enable this feature, you can see if you enable this policy settings, all the users are opted out of the Windows consumer experience improvement program. So that's exactly what we want to do right there. And again, there's some other ones in here that might interest you. Uh, this one right here might be useful. So you can see here, turn off help and support center. So we're going to enable that feature and uh, we're going to turn this off by enabling it. So you can see here, turn that off. And there's some other ones here as well, which we can deal with. Pretty much the same sort of thing, but this is for the knowledge base search. We're going to turn that off by enabling and we can click OK. And let's see if we've got any other ones here that we can use and turn off. And I can also see Windows error reporting here as well. Some people like to use Windows error reporting and some people don't. So just turn off whatever you don't want here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off Windows error reporting by enabling this thing. And you can see here, if you enable this policy, users are not given the option to report errors. If you want to report an error, by all means, crack on and do that. But if you don't, then enable that feature and it will stop you being prompted to report this error. So let's have a look what else we've got inside here. There's one right here. And you can see this one is to do with the turn off Windows Messenger customer experience improvement program. Again, more telemetry, as you would guess, with Windows. And you need to enable that feature to turn it off. So let's now go back to administrative templates and then go into system here and open this one up right here. Inside here, we're going to be looking for remote procedure call. And the remote procedure call, it should be down under the R's. There it is right here. So let's go inside here. And inside here, what we're looking for is the restrict uh, unauthenticated RPC clients. That's what we're going to be looking for here. So double click on this one here. And this will open up the little window. And from here, you can configure this to the way you like. So if you enable it, you can see here, it allows you to uh, say none. And this will basically restrict. So I'm going to restrict that and then apply it and OK that setting. So while we're here, we can take a look at system restore. So let's do system restore here. And again, you can turn off system restore. If you don't use system restore, it's going to use a lot of uh, storage. If you don't need it, you can turn it off. You need to enable this feature. If you enable this policy, uh, it basically turns off system restore. So let's go ahead and enable this and click uh, apply and OK. And obviously turn off the configuration panel. We don't want that either. And this will now disappear from our view. So let's get that applied and OK. So that's those two done. And again, you've got some other things inside here that you, might interest you. You can go through this whole list there's a ton of stuff here, but I'm doing all the main stuff that you would need. So user profiles inside here, turn off advertising ID. That goes without saying because this is to do with advertising and you want to turn that off. So we're going to enable this feature and you can see here that is now turned off by enabling it. And let me just quickly look inside here. And I don't see anything else inside here. But you can have a good look through here and make sure you've covered all of the things that you want to cover. But that is the main culprit inside there. So going back to where it says administrative templates here under the computer configuration, we're going to go into Windows components one more time here. And again, once we've done this, we'll go to app privacy. This is where you will turn off all your privacy apps. So if you don't want to deal with those settings anymore, this is where you turn it all off. You can go inside here and you can basically force deny all of these apart from, I would say, your camera and your microphone. If you use a web camera for streaming or something like that, you don't want to disable those. And if you use your microphone, you definitely want to de don't want to disable that. So put it on enable and force deny. And that will now be taken over by your policy and it will be grayed out and turned off uh, by default because we've done that in this policy here. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of these. It will take a bit of time, but I've done these as you can see here right now. And basically I've enabled all these and false denied the whole lot of them apart from microphone and uh, camera here. And that's all you need to do. And that should take care of all of those annoying privacy settings there inside the uh, Windows uh, settings.
So let's go back here now. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll do another one, which is to do with telemetry. So let's go ahead and do Windows components here. And what we're going to do is going to come down until we see application compatibility inside here. There's going to be some telemetry stuff that we need to take care of. And you can see turn off application telemetry. We want to enable this and this will turn off and stop the collection of user data when you're using applications. That's important because that is the information that is being collected and sent back to Microsoft. So you definitely want to turn that off by enabling that particular feature. So that is taken care of. Next up, we can turn off infantry collector. That says it all right there in the title. So let's double click on this one here. And uh, we can now enable this feature and you can see it will stop the collection of any sort of data there. So that is now done. And I think we've got the steps recorder here. Now this is being phased out, but again, it'll be probably left somewhere buried on the system. But if you don't want steps recorder, on your system, you can disable this. And some people are saying that some steps could be recorded and sent back to Microsoft. Uh, but personally, that's how you can turn that off. Next, we're going to go into the chat section here. And in the little state here, we need to change this to disabled and apply this on OK. And that will deal with the configuration of the chat icon on your taskbar. So we're just going to apply this and put this to disabled and click OK. So let's take a look. Cloud content here. There's another one right here. So inside here, you can guess it. Turn off cloud optimized content. You can turn this off if you want to. If you don't and you want to use it, by all means, leave it alone. But you can see here, if you enable this policy, Windows experiences that use the cloud optimized content, the client components will instead present the default uh, fallback content. So you can apply that and click OK and enable that feature. And this one here as well, we need to enable this feature as well because we're doing the same with the previous one. And we can now click apply and OK. And this will take care of that. And there's also do not show Windows tips. We obviously don't want Windows tips. So let's go ahead and uh, disable this feature by clicking on the enable and click OK and turn off Microsoft Consumer Experiences. Again, more telemetry more data collecting. So turn that off and we can enable these features by putting the radio button in the enable line. OK. And that's that taken care of. OK, so let's move on to the next section here. And we've done all those now. And what we can do here is go to where it says connect and inside here, do not allow this PC to project to. And we also have that section there. So let's go into there and we are going to disable this feature. So inside here, we're going to be uh, enabling this feature. As you can see, if you turn this on, your PC is discoverable and can be projected to. So we're going to apply this and click OK and turn that app off. So that's now done. Click OK. OK, so I think we've now pretty much done all of the group policies for now. So we can restart the system. I'm going to go ahead and restart. And once we get to the desktop, we can go into settings here. And if you go into your privacy and settings and all of the places that you've uh, been disabling, you should see some of these settings are now managed by your organization and they've all been turned off. And if we go into diagnostic feedback, you can see this is all being controlled by our policies and we've turned all of this stuff off. There's just one here that I need to take care of, which I've probably missed. But I can turn it off manually and uh, that should be tailored experiences. and. Once you've done all this, you can see it's all managed by the organization and all of the rest of it should be off. Now you've got all these settings done. You don't have to do these anymore. You can back those settings up inside your group policy editor and then import them on your new build every single time. You don't have to go through it all and all of this stuff will be off completely. You don't have to use any sort of debloating software or anything like that. It should be taken care of by group policies. And there's a few other things you can do, and I'll show you those in a second. But basically, everything has now been turned off and is not collecting any more data. So what else can you do? Well, let's go in here and we can now get rid of OneDrive, uninstall this, and also we can turn it off inside here. You can do these policies in here if you want to and basically do this. But it's not going to be on the system because I'm going to take it off. 
But if you want to go in here, you can do and manage this yourself by turning all of this off. And file history, if you're not using things like that, you can turn all those off in group policy. I left those because they are actually working features that people do use. So let's remove all of these programs now from the actual system. And you can do that by using a list which you can get anywhere on the internet. It will just remove all of this bloat from the PC. All you need to do is paste these into PowerShell. You can do these all in one fell swoop here, and it will remove all of them from the computer. It's that simple. And uh, you can see things like uh, Microsoft Store. If you don't use it, you can uninstall it and remove it. You can also turn that off in Group Policy if you want to. I don't normally touch that because some people do use it, but I'm going to remove it in this video because it's in that list. And I will leave this list on my website so you can gain access to it and just do this if you want to. I'll try and set up a, a GitHub page uh, at some point if I get some time to be able to do that. And hopefully this will deal with a lot of problems and questions that people ask all the time. Let's paste these in and let these go through. You might see a couple of errors and that be that might be because uh, the code is wrong, but I'll have to check some of those. Uh, but basically it's going to remove these. And when we restart the system, uh, these should all be removed from the computer. So I'm just going to allow that to do its thing. And then we can uh, do one more thing, which is uh, to do with uh, task scheduling. We can take care of that. There's a few things in there that you can uninstall and delete as well. And also some services if you want to. There's not vast amounts, but you can do it in manually. But what we'll do here is we'll just deal with this here and uh, we'll get rid of it. So I'm going to remove the store here. Now, if you do want to keep the store, then don't do this command. Otherwise, it will remove the store. It says it right there in the actual command store. So you know it's to do with the Microsoft store. So let's go ahead and we'll leave that as done. Next up, you can see what we're going to do here is take a look here. There's a few other little things in here which aren't installed on the system, but I'm going to remove them from the menu by right clicking and uninstalling. These aren't installed officially by default. They're just sitting here waiting for you to click on them and install them. So let's just remove them. If you need them, leave them alone. If you don't, then uninstall them. I'm going to unpin Grammarly uh, because it's not got an uninstaller on it. I'm just going to uninstall the stuff that I can unpin that as well so let me go ahead and uninstall this one there we go and uh, we might as well uninstall this right here and again i'm just going to uninstall these two here by just unpinning them so let's go ahead and do that and that's a lot tidier already and we should now once we uh, restart the system we should see all of that bloat removed so let's go ahead and do powershell here and uh, what we're going to do is open up the start and type PowerShell. And for PowerShell, this is going to remove some services and it's also going to do some task schedulers. So we're going to do those as well. I just need to uninstall first this one here, which is the maps. And we're going to remove all of this from the computer. So let's go ahead and now open up the command prompt one more time and run this as administrator here. And this will remove the maps from the computer. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will delete that for us right here. And again, this is all just code that you can pick up along the way on the internet as well. So if we take a look now at the menu here, you can see it's pretty clean. And again, there's a few more little things you can take care of here. Uh, but again, tips and uh, quick assist and things like that. You can only store a bunch of those and you can do that. Uh, yourself manually and go through there but again this is a never-ending task there is always something that you can do but it looks clean and tidy it's good enough for most people that want to use a windows computer all of the bloat and uh, telemetry has been disabled and turned off and you can just do a few more little cleanup jobs and you should be good to go and there's a few services that you can uh, disable or remove and i'll quickly do those in command prompt here i will leave the code on my website when i get a chance to put it all together i will get up a github page for you guys and you'll be able to just copy and paste it and paste it in there but this will remove a lot of this stuff it's added a few registry keys in there and that should now be taken care of now there is an area like the task scheduler here which you can uh, remove manually yourself you can go inside here and there's a few areas inside here which you can remove stuff from, disable, or even delete if you want to. 
and there's quite a few areas here and these are widely uh, talked about on the internet again if you want to do a bit of research on that you can do you can leave it well alone if you want to but if you want to remove it you can remove a lot of this stuff via command prompt and let me run this as administrator again and uh, again paste it in and basically uh, remove a lot of that stuff and disable some of the stuff that you don't want like all the telemetry side of things but we took in care of a lot of this stuff inside group policy but this is just uh, you know finishing off the finishing touches now you can take this even further and go even further by removing say Microsoft Edge and uninstalling uh, Windows Defender and doing stuff like that but this is when things get broken and you will end up breaking or bricking your Windows operating system there's loads of things you can do with uh, Windows updates and things like that Again, these settings will not be going back anytime soon and they will not undo your settings when you do a Windows update. These are locked in because it is a group policy that you've set in place. The only time you can break your system if you start removing key components from Windows and that is something that you don't want to do because that's when you're going to break your operating system. When an update comes, it may cause a problem. So now you can uh, make an image of your system or you can actually. Uh, you know, back up all your settings to what you've done. I'll try and make a full list of this on the GitHub so you can follow along. And I'll add some extra things on there if you want to go down that route and take them out. But you should have a perfectly working system. And this is good enough for most people, in all honesty. And again, you can speed this process up by using applications like ShutUp10 and running scripts as well if you wanted to. There's also Chris Titus text tool that you can use. There's loads of ways of going about doing this sort of thing. The good thing about this is it's using Windows uh, built in group policy and it's reversible and you can normally see what you're actually doing. So it's a safer way of doing things rather than just running someone's script off the Internet and not knowing what codes in there and removing key components from your computer that you might need. I will make a GitHub page and I will put all of the code and even more code that I have up there so you can copy and paste and run it. Again, I don't like doing too much of that because I'm more worried about someone running something and removing a key component and breaking their system and then they jump in the comment section and say I broke their computer. Again, all this stuff is at your own risk. It's all pretty safe using a group policy. You're not going to break your system by using group policy editor. It's made by Microsoft and it's there to disable and stop things. It's when you start physically removing key components that are not meant to be removed and you're using PowerShell or you're using some sort of uh, command prompt script to remove it. Anyway, but that said, I think I'm starting to waffle on now. I'm going to call this one done. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you've watched all the way to the end, let me know in the comments section by saying the word sausage. I'll be happy to read your comments and I shall see you in the very next video. Big shout out to all my YouTube members for support. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.